not having Quadell Harris. Uh, he's one of their key guys, not just because of the points per game, but I also think his leadership. Let's see how Boston College handles the loss of him not being in the lineup. And check out the starters for Boston College with Kelly in there. He's going to run the point, so it moves Jaden Zachary, number three scorer for BC, off ball to the two. This one goes out of bounds off of Quentin Post. So a turnover to start on the first possession. Well, you can see the strategy early on for Boston College. They want to establish the point, paint. And for Central Connecticut, when we spoke to Coach Pat Sellers, he said, look, we need to keep Boston College outside the paint. Here are the starters for Pat Sellers, and here's their top scorer. Alan Gene Rose goes to work, and with a right hand, he scores. He's the Fairfield transfer at 15 a game. That's a great start for Central Connecticut right there. Just the isolation play put him down low on the block, and he just elevated uh, that time over a lead back. BC coming off the overtime loss here against NC State Saturday, 84-78, a game in which they did not shoot it well at the free throw line, and uncharacteristically so. Prince Alipe on a follow away that doesn't go. We get a foul away from the ball that goes against Devin McClacton. Well, there is Pat Sellers, who played in Central Connecticut and was a captain. He's also East Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He was an assistant there and now in his third year back at his alma mater. Uh, really just a, a great human being. Uh, played against his older brother as well, too, Rod Sellers, uh, when he was at UConn. And again, just a great family. And he's doing a great job early on with this Central Connecticut program. He's got his team at three and four. They started one and four, but coming off back-to-back -back wins. This is an offensive foul on Allen Gene Rose, drawn by Chaz Kelly. Yeah, that's great team defense that time by Boston College. Chaz Kelly, again, nice little backdoor cut, but the help side defense is there, and that's something uh, we saw them work on and shoot around this afternoon. Again, he knew this Central Connecticut team wants to attack the paint. Uh, Earl Grant and staff talked about the help side defense needs to be there. That's a good sign early on for Boston College. And we asked Earl Grant, what do you want to see from Chaz Kelly? He said, take care of my ball and be sound defensively. That was sound defense from Chaz Kelly right there, the sophomore from Houston. Zachary around the screen. Off to the wing for McLaughlin. Coming up, maybe his best game of the season against NC State. And they're going to need that. Again, Quentin Post draws so much attention. We talked about the numbers he's putting up. Such Connecticut's going to double him, try to make it difficult to get the ball in the paint. Boston College is going to have to hit some perimeter jumpers. Pat Seller said, make them beat us outside the arc. Zachary the swipe. And Kelly couldn't save it in the quarter. Or Grant, of course, in his third season. Talked to him about that game Saturday. You were here for it. He told us we lost, but we felt like we did enough to win. Yeah, it was a great game back and forth. Both teams really played at a high level uh, offensively uh, and defensively. The issue in that game, though, for Boston College, missed free throws. Uh, they missed a lot of free throws in that game. Tough finish at the rim by Jaden Brown, the junior big from Providence. Here's Post. Just off the elbow. Set some screen for Kelly. Post gets so many shots from right there from three, but drew back iron that time and the rebound to Jay Rogers. Rogers, long two, swirls out. Matt Sellers wants to play with some tempo today offensively. He tells his team if it's in rhythm, if it's there for you, go get it in transition. Post off the pick and roll with Zachary. Textbook pick and roll that time. Jaden Zachary uh, to Quentin Post, and the help is not there uh, for Central Connecticut. And I think that's the area Earl Grant, again, they want to attack uh, the paint. Don't settle for jumpers against this team. Try to see if you can get paint touches. There's points for Post. Amos off target, run down by Kelly, and the Eagles run. Alique Bay being hounded by Amos. It stays BC. You can't run it any better right here. Again, little side screen action. Come off that time, Jaden Zachary, and then that's a beautiful finish by Quentin Post. Post second in the ACC in scoring, only behind Clemson's P.J. Hall. It's off to a great start for an undefeated Tigers team. Zachary moves it to a wide open Alik Bay. And a rebound pulled down by Rogers. That's a great block out that time by Central Connecticut on Quentin Post. Blocked by McClacton on Gene Rose. Post looking for a dribble handoff with Kelly. 
And then nobody home as Alik Bey started to cut. And it's already a third Eagles turnover. Well, this is great transition D right here by McLaughlin. Again, breaking up what looked like it was going to be a deuce. On the other end, again, Earl Grant talked about it. Taking care of the ball as you take a look. Chaz Kelly coming out of the game. And he's a talented offensive player. The one thing from that point guard position he wants him to continue to grow with. Turnovers. So he goes to the bench. And Donald Hand Jr. comes in 13 in white along with Mason Madsen, 45 for BC. Jordan Jones on a step back, spun out after he muscled with Zachary. Jordan Jones, a talented player, D2 transfer. 23 in the gray for Central Connecticut. Oh, look at the drop step from Post. Simple basketball, Mike. They didn't run offense there. They just said, look, you're going to play man. We're going to isolate Post by uh, that time on the block. And I think the key with that is they have excellent spacing. Well, Central Connecticut's going to have to make a decision. Uh, probably going to have to double up that time if they're going to go single coverage uh, with Quentin Post. Brown banging with Post and rolled off. Kept alive and tapped out of bounds by BC. Quentin Post has a couple of buckets. This loud for the big fella. Seven-footer from Amsterdam. Post and the Eagles up a bucket early. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. I'm so glad we did this. Edward Jones. The magic never leaves you when you stay with the Disney Resorts Collection. Making every day more magical than your last. And bringing you extra time in any of the four theme parks. Start saving today. The sky is the bomb. Play music. People want to define Gen Z, but that's our job. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Glitzy glam. Super snazzy. A real saucy boy. Oh, Dynamite. Don't I know it. Style maestro. Thanks. It's Old Navy. Some people just know what road to take. Turn left. Not happening. Take the next exit. Don't think I will, disembodied voice. Recalculating. You're not from right here, so you don't know the back roads. Those are the people who know safe drivers save 40% with Allstate. To show who's the cheesy. I woke up feeling the cheesiest coach. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Back at County Four of Boston College, up by three on Central Connecticut with the Eagles looking to respond in non conference play again without. Waddell Harris out with an ankle injury suffered Saturday against the Wolfpack. And Jones nearly lost the handle and now on the baseline, Rogers threw it down at the feet of Abdul Bobo. And a foul committed by him. And Mike, it's huge for Boston College. Uh, I called this game back and forth uh, contest between NC State and Boston College and right here. Call it a lower leg injury and Look, he's their lead, second leading scorer, but I think the leadership and then his ability to knock down threes and beat you off the bounce huge in this one right here against a team like Central Connecticut uh, that wants to keep you outside the paint. Uh, Boston College is going to have to hit some jumpers. Yeah, if we want to get super technical, 
Pro Grant called it an ankle. But really, it's it's a little above the ankle. It's not a high ankle. So let's just go with lower leg. How does that sound? I, I don't have an MD or any type of medical degree, so I leave that to people that are a lot smarter than me. So I'll just go with lower leg. Yep, and a guy who can score. So Madsen gets some more run, and he sticks a three, and that's an encouraging sign for the senior guard off the bench. And it's a great out-of-bounds underneath that time. A little screen-to-screener action. Great footwork coming off, and when we spoke with Earl Grant, he said, look, he's the guy they have to get going. They're going to need his perimeter shooting. Central Connecticut has missed its last five shots until that tough one from Jordan Jones starting to come to life. He had 18 in the win Saturday against Holy Cross. I mean, wow. A degree of difficulty off the charts. That's not bad defense by Boston College. That's just a big-time finish. Malik Bay. Wow, look at those strikes to the cup, but he missed it. And then Zachary picks it. And we should have... Reset to 30, I believe, there, but only reset to 20 on the shot clock. And Coach Sellers and staff rave about Jones' tenacity right there. That's an aggressive move. Again, take the hit, great body control. I was on the rim the whole time, and that's a tough finish over a seven footer. From Division II Coker in South Carolina and from Florence, same hometown as his head coach. Pat Sellers, so Pat Sellers called his best friend, his old high school point guard, Larry Johnson, and said, do you know this Jones kid? And of course, like any good friend, Larry Johnson did. I mean, I love hearing stories like that, a guy that starts off at the G2 level and, you know, just continues to grind it out. And I always tell young players, you never know who is watching you in the gym. And there he is in attack mode again, answering Matson's bucket. A couple of quick hoops for Jordan Jones at eight and a half a game. Austin College is going to have to do a better job keeping Jones out of the paint. That's it. Hits another. And how about the instant offense from Mason Madsen off the bench without Harris? And he's going to get open looks. Oh, they're doubling Quentin Post before he even has the ball. So again, somebody is going to have open looks. Devontae Sweatman, a Boston native, playing here in Chestnut Hill, misses the jumper. I mean, you said it right away. That was priority number one for Central Connecticut defensively. Limit posts and avoid those paint touches from BC offensively. Post can step out, and he hits that as well. A 4-3 for the Eagles, and Central Connecticut needs a timeout. Mike, th that is what makes Quentin Post a matchup nightmare. A, a seven footer that can screen, step out on a three point line right now, though, Boston. Coming. And mom and dad? Don't worry, they'll be there. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Go beyond the expected with the number one most dependable mass market brand three years in a row by JD Power. Kia, movement that inspires. At Jersey Mike's, they slice your sub right in front of you. All that meat and cheese just for me. Watching that takes me to my happy place. Oh, wait. Jersey Mike's is my happy place. Kelly, did I place an order here in my happy place? Not yet, Danny. Then I'm going back to reality. Number seven for Danny. Oh, thanks, reality, Kelly. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Slide and strong, wow. Turn around and stick it up, wow, wow. Fine, fine specimen, wow. Jump it down, I'll pick it up, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Jump it down, I'll pick it up, wow, wow. Wow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Jump it down, I'll pick it up, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Wow.
chosen exclusively at Jared. Now get up to 25% off store wide. BC rolling. Four and a half to go, second half, trying to get to the finish line of this one, trying to bounce back in non conference action with four more of those, including tonight, so they get back into ACC play. Mason Madsen to the basket and 13 in the first half and his first points of the second half. Team high 15 for Mason Madsen. Alan Jean Rose drives on a league bay and gets the roll. Chance in three for Alan Jean Rose. It's up to 18 and 10. I've been impressed with his game. He's in the athletic wing. He's got a quick uh, first step, and that's a couple times now we've seen him get isolated uh, up on the wing and make one quick move, get to the rack, and finish. And that's got to be pleasing for Coach Sellers. Again, been a tough afternoon, tough night, but uh, this young man at the line has been impressive uh, for Central Connecticut. Sellers was familiar with Alan Jean Rose because they were together at Fairfield at the same time. They saw Alan Jean Rose on the last day of his recruiting period. And they offered him. And Alan Jean Rose did not have any offers or great opportunities at that time. And now in year five, playing collegiately, he's developed into a very good player. Pat Sellers was reminiscing with us. He said, Alan Jean Rose was a little puppy then. Tell him now he's probably only a couple of years younger than me. <laughs> And, you know, that's the beauty of coaching, though. These uh, coaches put so much time and energy into these young men, and for them to get a chance to see them kind of develop, mature, and then not only as uh, players on the court, but young men off the court as well, too. And really, both these coaches talk about uh, that's really the joy in coaching. Obviously, yes, you want them to develop as players and help you win games. Uh, but it's also off the court seeing these young men develop as well. Sellers an assistant at Fairfield before getting the head job now in year three at his alma mater. Now Jean Rose is calling for it against the walk-on Abe Ataya. This is Brody Limerick out of the corner. Brody Limerick has only played 22 minutes all year. The sophomore from Glastonbury, Connecticut. That's an excellent catch and shoot that time by Lemrick. Played for a really good high school program. Uh, in Connecticut as well, too, but certainly. Lemrick tipped it out. Stays with BC. More of a haiku guy myself. <laughs> Crowd has been begging for a Bataya to get a chance to shoot. And the walk-on checks out, so you hear boos here at County Forum. Come on, Coach. Give my guys some run. The fans uh, right here and the student section behind us uh, want to see the guy uh, get some run. And certainly this is a great time, though, for him. Obviously does everything that the regular players do, with the exception of getting an opportunity to play. So anytime the chances coaches can get them walk-ons in the game, uh, uh, they like to reward them with some burn. He'll be back. I think we got two and a half to go. Jones had a great first half for the Blue Devils. Crosses up Kelly. It's a foul. That speech, don't give up, don't ever give up, has created what we're here today. A legacy that affects so many people battling cancer. And that's what Jimmy's done. Save lives and he'll go on generation after generation. That's a great legacy to have. It's V-Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. It's game-changing research, and it helps save lives. And you can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. Remember this, because it's special. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Simply get chills watching that video and all the work that the foundation does. And also a shout out to our colleague, uh, 
Duke's Vic Vitale, the legend. Uh, you know, look, he caught my second college game at Duke, and what he's done in raising funds and, and also awareness uh, for cancer research really uh, remarkable. Really, not you know, just speechless in terms of what he's been able to do. Amen to that. Vic Vitale tweeted earlier today, by the way. Bataille is coming back into the ballgame. Nikki V was tweeting earlier about a text message he received from Tom Izzo. Text message from Tom Izzo was lengthy, but very heartfelt. And he was talking about how special a week it is for Dickie V this week and Jimmy V week and the Jimmy V classic. And Tom Izzo had a lot of praise for Dickie V because of how he never stops working in his fight for the B Foundation. There's probably not a person uh, on earth that has not have been impacted uh, by a family member, a friend, a loved one uh, that has been, been impacted by cancer. So really just applaud and the you know, high praise for what the foundation uh, Dickie V has been able to do to raise awareness and funds uh, for cancer research. Amen to that. Jones. Sweep reverse. We'll get some subs here inside in 90 seconds to go as Earl Brandt empties the bench. Jack Tadada, Ethan Soares, Asher Jackson all check into the game. Three more walk-ons joining Ava Taya. Well, next up for BC, Friday they host Holy Cross. Watch that on ECC Network Extra. Then Sunday they'll be in Brooklyn. They'll face St. John's in a game on ESPNU. Coming down the stretch of non-conference action before they get right back to it in the ACC. Well, every game counts. Uh, you know, again, they're a team that is trying uh, to build a resume. Jones picked it. He scores, and you see what it looks like. Finish out non-conference action, and then right back to it after the new year with Wake, and then at Georgia Tech, he's already got a couple of good wins in a row. Jones again after a couple of turnovers from the BC bench. The offense was flowing, and they get the job done in the end against Central Connecticut State. Well, it was an all-around performance. I think the three-point shooting story in this game uh, for Boston College, uh, really, it was a phenomenal display by them. I think the ball movement, the balance on offense, uh, and then defensively, they really made it difficult uh, for Central Connecticut to get anything going uh, on the offensive side. Earl Grant and BC with an 